Hey YouTube, looking at Beyond the Hype of Jumpluff, which is now the second highest flyer in the meta uh, behind Mandibuzz. So Jumpluff, half flying, half grass, jumps to 10 and 7 because Fairy Wind got a buff. And what does Fairy Wind do? Uh, so here's your fast moves, here's your energy generation on the far right. There is your Fairy Wind at 4.5. So obviously Karate Chop is the new broken move, 4.5, 2.5. Uh, but last season, everything was at this. 4.5 and 1.5 so you had a four and a half energy with one and a half uh damage uh mudshot was there poison sting was there psycho cut thundershock they were all and fairy wind they were all the same and then this season uh both poison sting here at two and fairy wind at two both got buffed so half a damage more per turn on the fairy wind damage so with jump luff being very very tanky um and having a little more damage here, it does well. Now, how strong is this Pokemon stat product? Fantastic, right? Fits the bill of exactly what you want. Super low attack, super high defense, super high stamina, 2300 overall, great, great stat product. Um, with it, you are suggested to run Fairy Wind, Aerial Ace, and Energy Ball. Why? Um, so Energy Ball is your best grass move, right? 55 energy, 129 damage. 2.36 damage per energy, great damage per energy, and your quickest grasp move you can get to. So now the second answer to your question is your flying type move. So you have a 40 energy aerial ace with 79 damage for 1.98, and you have uh, acrobatics, which is 60 energy, but 158 damage. It is such a hard hitting move at 2.64. Now the recommended move set is aerial ace on both the shadow and the non-shadow. And why is that? And I think it, what it comes down to is basically um, a bait move that will probably help in some sims um, and just help, I think, probably overall. Yes, Fairy Wind is a fast en fast energy generating move. Ener at one Fairy Wind, is, this is energy per turn, so one Fairy Wind equals nine. The problem is if you only have Energy Ball and Acrobatics, your quickest move both of them are seven fairy winds, which is quite long, um, right? So seven fairy winds to get to that. Now they're both nukes. And I would like to see, I would be interested to see how acrobatics on a shadow jump left does. Um, I, in my video with one of my press videos these past few days, I used the non shadow with acrobatics. And I, I felt that the non shadow with acrobatics just was not good enough because um, yes, it does an insane amount of damage. Uh, like when you look at the non-shadow stat product, uh, it still does an insane amount of damage even without that 20% damage bonus for shadow. 132 is a lot of damage. The problem is 132, uh, even though it's a lot of damage, it's not enough to like take stuff out. A lot of stuff you can hit with an acrobatics, but it would live in the fairy wind. Yes, it got buffed for damage, but it's not enough to, to take it down. The shadow version, I think, 160 almost 160 damage i think that would be closer to taking one shotting things so if you potentially want to run double nukes you can one shot things that being said air lace at a two damage per turn per energy per turn move at 40 energy so having something that is just so quick five four five four um just being able to spam a two damage per energy move having a bait move if you need to like bait air lace and land energy ball i just think overall it does work better um but yeah, acrobatics could be good. In terms of the typing, flying grass, and again, I said it's there's flying is hurting this season, right? So let's just go flyers here just so you can see why flying is hurting. Um, Manaba's at number two. Then we got jump off back to back here. Uh, but then we go down to Galarian Moltres, which not a lot of people have. And then we're looking at Togetic, uh, which is getting by as the fairy, and then Talonflame. And that is all we have in the top 100 as flyers. Um, so, there's all, and if you take out the double here there's only five 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 pokemon one probably not available for most in the top 100 so flying is very very limited so jump off having a flying typing honestly just gives it a huge advantage not, not i'm not even gonna talk about like the weaknesses and resistances i'm just gonna talk about like there's not a lot of flyers so having a flying type is good <laughs> right from that perspective now it's also good from the perspective that it was that you are a flying grass so you resist fighting water grass and ground and there's not a lot of grass so we'll just kind of ignore that but there is a lot there's a heck of a lot of ground this season um 
and you triple resist ground. So triple resisting, double resisting on the flying, single resisting on the grass, triple resisting ground. Lots of, there's still for alligators so resisting the water. All the, the new fighters there. I think fighters overall have probably gone down, but there are still some fighters out there, counter users, not fair, karate chop users and um, other Pokemon that have like superpower and stuff. So lots of good resistance for the meta. You do have a lot of weaknesses though. Ice, fire, flying, poison, rock. I just kind of went over how flying, there's not a lot of it. Ice, you're double weak to ice, but again, there's not a ton of it yet. I think we may see with Clodsire everywhere, and if Jumpluff starts to rise up, we may see more ice Pokemon. I've already seen a few more Dugongs and Walrins and stuff already. So ice may be one that we may see more of. Um, and then fire, yes, there's some fire buffs, but I still think fire has a huge issue in this meta. And then obviously poison, poison staying up buffs, so there's some poison users. So I used a very balanced my style team. Quagsire lead, Sableye safe swap, Jumpluff in the back, Quagsire weak to grass, like I said, triple resist the grass with the jump pluff. Sableye is your safe swap, non shadow Sableye. I have read all your comments about shadow Sableye is amazing on the lead or as a closer. It is not great as a safe swap. I would agree with that. Um, but I want to use Sableye as a safe swap on this meta. So I am using on this team. So I am using the non shadow version with return. Um, so let's get into it with uh, Spirit Bomb against Quagsire. Mud Bomb, Octail is what I'm running on it here. I do not know what the moves are, so I'm just going to take a move. It is a Shadow Sneak. We CMP'd there. I'm hoping this takes it low enough that I can just Aqua Tail. I kind of mentioned it in the other video that I used at the Shield. So let's see if I go with just me. Yeah, I'm only going to get to one move. Let's just do the Mud Bomb. I mentioned this in the other video. You really feel that extra Mud Shot it takes to get to the Aqua Tail and Mud Bombs on these things. So Quakes are definitely worse. Still very strong. I grabbed two Shields. Uh, can I come and jump off because they are half dark so I can do super effective fairy winds, but not like it's doing much I could take a sucker punch, but um, I it has a rock tomb. So I good shield then <laughs> I shield the first move. It is a rock tomb. So that is a good shield This energy ball should take out um, Met with an Ampharos. So I'm just gonna stay in here take a move get off an energy ball um, Get hit with a brutal swing uh, and then I'll probably instant swap because I feel like I can get farmed down otherwise. Yeah, I just come in and start clawing. Brutal Swing comes fast now. Um, so hit with the Brutal Swing, still a lot of damage there. It is an Azumarill in the back and this is why I love Sableye with Return. Uh, Sableye with Return, well over 50%. The Claws are adding up. I still need a second one but i have a shield and there's the pacing on this thing even with the return which is a much higher energy move than power gem still gonna get to it take this azumarill out uh, and secure the win here so quagsire against clodsire we obviously know there's gonna be a lot of those outcomes for alligator out comes the jump off the only problem with this is this thing has ice beam and I am double weak to Ice Beam. So I shield it up. It is an Ice Beam. At this point, I'm like, I'm going to get outpaced if I don't start baiting. So I am going to start baiting immediately. I grab the first shield. These Fairy Winds are chipping because for Alligator, I'm a Shadow, they're a Shadow. For Alligator, is glossy. Shield up again. I get lucky that they actually go Ice Beam for a second straight time. And that they call they shield both of my baits. So second area lace coming. It, they shield up again, which means that now I can very easily get to the energy ball. I'm not counting, so we are going to throw this right away. If I was counting in I new energy, I maybe get more energy, but I don't know them. I knew Clodsire was coming back in, so I just instant swap because I have basically kind of two answers for, I mean, not answers, but Quagsire and Sableye both resist Poison Sting on Clodsire, so I'm not taking super effective move on Jump, super effective Poison Sting on Jump Pluff if I do not have to. And that is the benefit of this 50 second timer. You can jump around a lot. And I have been. Um, so I'm just spamming these mud bombs to try and chip the Azumarill. I'll probably even live a play rough, quite honestly. Yeah, I do. And I just throw the move because I think that they're in mud bomb range. They are not. So I will come in and Shadow Claw down, get a little bit ahead of energy here. And uh, we're both zero shields. So I'm throwing this first just to see, like, 
Can I go two foul plays? I don't think I can. Um, again, the shadow version probably would be able to. But the non-shadow, I don't think I can. So I will... Uh, but I do have return. As opposed to power jump, which is resisted. Hmm. What am I doing? Just force them to throw energy because I can get to aerial ace anyways and outpace them here. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I'm going to outpace on the jump bluff. So they hit me with a stone edge. Um, coming in here, forcing their energy, even though they maybe could have farmed me down and got to a move. What am I doing? And then I very, what the hell was that? Okay. That was, that was, I don't know what happened there. That was weird. That was a bad play on my part. Lucky to have won that with a bunch of questionable plays there. Okay. Dragonair lead. Body Slam is nerfed, so Aqua Tail is probably the go-to move now. Um, get to the Mud Bomb, hoping it's enough to take out, or hoping that they think I have a Stone Edge and Shield. They do not, and I think that they can get to a move, so I just throw the Aqua Tail to take this out to try and keep Switch, but uh, going down a Shield and with little health left and no energy, and there is your Empoleon. So, is that still with... Is that still with Steel Wing as opposed to, or is that Metal Claw? Oh, I'm thinking it's Metal Claw because I can see the stripes. Okay. Uh, this thing does have Metal Claw now, Empoleon. Um, I think it has the same stats as last, as Steel Wing pre nerf. Steel Wing still does way more damage, but way less energy now. So yeah, uh, was that the same? No, I think I don't know. Metal Claw does not look good on Napoleon. Um, is it the same as as old Steel Wing? I don't think so. Anyways, sorry, I digress. Back to the matchup. Uh, they land a Thunderbolt. I need to land an Energy Ball. But they go back to back. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember this, this matchup. I play like crap, and they don't even call. It. They let this go too. I remember playing like crap this one too. Okay, let's try one where I don't play like crap. Okay, Machamp lead, which is gonna be like neutralish at best, because these karate chops and cross chops are gonna come significantly outpace me, uh, and they try to catch like a stone edge no i wouldn't throw stone edge against my champ so i throw a mud bomb or aqua tail so they're catching a neutral move um and coming into jump off because this thing is a mud boy not a mud boy it's ground so it's got a lot of ground moves i forgot it also has a rock slide so good coverage with this pokemon um but i have the energy ball so this probably sh should one shot as a shadow on a on a ground type pokemon and it does so goodbye marowak out comes Claude Sire. Oh my god, Claude Sire is going to be on so many freaking teams. Which is why I started looking for like, like I said, I used in this morning's video, I used Driplim, which was great. Resist the poison. You usually take Super Fricton from Stone Edge though, but resist poison. You have Icy Wind and Astonish really chips. And then I also use Shadow Drafferig and then Umbreon kind of an evenish matchup, right? So, um, I think you do need to start like looking for Pokemon to deal with Cloud Sire because it seems to be on a lot of freaking teams. But Sableye with the shield advantage, um, just being able to resist all these poison stings and shield up the earthquake. I have a ton of energy. Just going foul play here. They shield. And at this point I can just go, I mean, I probably can just go foul play to win, but I'm probably just gonna nuke it with return. Because I'm using the Purified, so might as well um, use the move. So I'll take it out for the win there. Okay, terrible lead, but I got two better answers in the back. So we're going to instant swap, and then I met with Claw Sire. <laughs> Again, as a half ghost, I resist that poison. So I'm going straight return, because um, if I land this, then it's easier just to go foul play, as opposed to like throwing foul play first, and they may shield up the second one. So... Just go straight return, landed it. I will shield an earthquake because I really need to flip switch. I need to get that jump off on that um, on that Glade. So I'm definitely going to wear shielding here. Easy farm down. 
Um, so that's good for alligators here. So I'm definitely going to just stay in here and then Quagsire on it and then Jump Luff will just take out the Glade. So they shield. That's fine. Um, I think I catch on. Yeah, I catch on Quagsire because again, like Quagsire is just a sacrifice anyways. So I'm trying to save Sableye a bit because it's got a decent matchup in the back here. Plus I can come back in and uh, spam. So they have to throw because we're going to CMP on the Mud Bomb. I don't know why I tried to throw Aqua Tail there. Um, and now I get to another move and I'm going to force their shield, force them to throw energy. So force that shield. They're going to try and claw down. Not going to happen. So they're going to have to throw here. This is the strength of non-shadow Sableye. Um, and now I just come and fairy wind and shield and dominate. Yes. Okay. Neutral matchup because you're both mud boys. So again, if they just throw body slam, I don't care about body slam because that's a bad move on a non stab gastrodon. So live the body slam get off the mud bomb and then I'll, uh, outpace here. So I will have to shield one. And I will shield, but then I get to two Aqua Tails before they get to the next move. So in the one shield after landing that Mud Bomb, I will take this. I have played this matchup a couple times now. So throw the Aqua Tail. They shield. Get another Mud Shot Aqua Tail. This will take out in the one shield. So I'm going to take out in the one shield, which is great. What do they have? A Charger Bug. And this is not great because <laughs> now it's like, okay, here's my thinking. Where am I going to go? I'm neutral across the board here everywhere. Jump off's a little tank here, so I think I just want to take it on the jump off. It's neutral, half flying, half grass. It neutralizes both the electric and the X scissor. Uh, but that hurts, and I can only throw air lace because energy ball is resisted by the bug. And I can only get a great throw because the game's been lagging on me. The game has uh, the last, last like two days for sure. I saw it a bit on the first day. I didn't see it a bunch on the first day. Even the second day was not bad. The third day, um, when did we turn over here? Yeah, we turned over on Tuesday. So Tuesday was fine. Wednesday was okay. Thursday and Friday, the leg has been not good. Um, like there's a lot of times I've only been throwing greats and losing um, like fast moves and stuff through. So unfortunately, it's not great. I go return here. They shield, which means this, this is a game lost. If if they let it go or I baited, maybe I could have won this. But uh, unfortunately, I cannot win this when they... Um, and it looks like this is only a one-turn Pokemon too. So like a one-move Pokemon because they throw a resistance sludge bomb three times at, at me instead of a neutral crutch or aqua tail and they still win. So great job me. And again, mirror match, we just saw this. I'll try and take it in the one. As we still have five minutes to go. I'm hoping to get, um, if you're watching this video and you played some little, uh, again, I don't even know if I can get ahead on the videos. That's a thing, maybe on Monday. Um, yeah, if you played Little Cup this week and you have some videos you want to submit, link in the description because it is a little cup in ultra league next week so if i can get ahead on videos maybe like sunday or monday that would help me out next week because this two a night has been killing me um to like play because i don't mind doing two a night but sometimes it's like also like your battles and my battles so it's like one of mine one of yours um which is just like it's not just like the filming of the two videos. It's also like having to do the 25 battles per day. <laughs> so when you add on like an hour and a half of doing the 25 battles and then the probably like three hours doing the two videos, it adds up. Um, so I'm hoping to get back to like a, I'll still keep the two videos per day, but uh, yeah, hoping to not have to do them all at 11 o'clock at night like it is right now. Staying in this matchup because Sableye obviously has a terrible matchup. So I'm just going to chip with Fairy Wind and Aerial Ace. This is where Aerial Ace is obviously helping just being able to, well, Acrobatics would obviously be way more damage, but that would also require them to um, 
not shield, right? A lot of hydro <laughs> in this matchup. Why are you letting a hydro cannon go from a fur alligator? You may be asking. Well, um, I thought I had zero shields, um, so I didn't shield, and then they had zero shields. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I have a shield, so I'll shield this, and I'll get off the aerial ace and still win. But yeah, shield up that hydro cannon. I don't know what I was not focusing on there. Again, I'm always usually doing something else when I'm playing. It's never just like focusing on the game. Malamar. Um, so here comes the crazy side wave enemy. Up oh, there it is, right in your face. Um, this thing's spammy. They get to the foul play. Foul play does hurt. I'll get to the mud bomb, and then hopefully I can get to an Octail before they get to another one. Or they're gonna have to throw superpower, which is quicker. I throw the Aqua Tail. I didn't know I got to the Mud Bomb there because I, I don't know the new counts yet. So yes, obviously, if you have only going to get to one move, throw the Mud Bomb. Not that it matters because they shield. Going to come and jump off, force them to... Okay, they reset onto Ariados. So this is my other ghost to resist that. I assume it's like some sort of bug type move. Trailblaze. Interesting. Why aren't you running? There's no way that Trailblaze is the recommended move on, on Ariados here. It is. Lunge Trailblaze? What about Cross Poison? Poison Sting, yes, I know is buff, but it's not a hard-hitting move. It's still an energy-generating move. Why would you not go Cross Poison and Lunge? You'd still hit the Mud Boys, like Gashadon and the ground types for neutral with lunge. I get that there's a lot of ground type Pokemon. I guess, well, no, because the raw damage is still seven more on lunge. Same energy. Damage is Trailblaze 65, lunge 72. Lunge, 100% chance of lowering your opponent's attack. Trailblaze, 100% chance of boosting your attack. Um... So they're running both of those, but Cross Poison is a 35 for 60, so it's a quicker move at 35, better damage per energy at 1.71 compared to 1.6 and 1.44, and still has a 12 and a half chance of boosting your attack by two. I don't understand why they're not running Cross Poison. The PV Poke, again, people are probably running Lunge Trailblaze because that's what PV Poke says. And in The Sims, I'm sure that's what it says to do, but I don't think that's right. I will... Actually, someone said try Aridos. Maybe I will, but maybe I'll try it with my Musa that I want to try it with. I just saw Rise also post something. Um, he posted a video on Aridos. So I want to see what his moveset is. He's been posting a lot. Everyone's just trying to post their videos to... Aridos is my favorite Pokemon in the new meta. Okay, what moveset did you use? You used Lunge and Trailblaze. Huh. Interesting. If anyone's used Aridos this season, uh, drop a comment about how you used it and what moveset you used. Again, I, intuitively, it doesn't make sense to use, to use a Trailblaze when you have Cross Poison and Lunge. Um, this one with a shield advantage, I will shield. Uh, they gave up. Okay. That one I would have shielded smartly, but I do take that because they know the writing's on the wall. Anyways, that is it. I'm tired. No after talk today. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.